All right, listen guys, I get it. Choosing which MacBook configuration is right for you is no easy task. And actually, a few of you guys have already DM'd me for recommendations. So due to the fact that the holidays are right around the corner and because these all new redesigned MacBook Pros are straight fire, literally sent to us from the Apple gods, I will be making a ton of head-to-head -head comparison videos so you guys have a better understanding and hopefully make a better, more informed decision. My DMs are officially open for any needing advice on which model fits your needs the best. So feel free to shoot me a DM with your typical use case and I'd be happy to give you my honest recommendation. Thing is, everybody's use case for their MacBooks are different. People use their MacBooks for different reasons. Maybe you're a statistics student like me and use a ton of programming software. Or maybe you're a photographer and want to know which MacBook is going to give you the best performance for the money. Whatever your case may be, prepare yourself. For today, we'll be pitting up the base 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro against a mid-tier spec 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Damn, that was a mouthful. We're not going to waste any more time here, so let's go ahead and get this show on the road. All right, all right, so you have a tough decision. You're wondering which MacBook Pro would best suit your needs, huh? The 13-inch or the 14-inch? Which model offers a better bang for your buck? Well, you're in luck because all we're gonna look at today is performance. We're not gonna cover any exterior differences or design changes because I already made a whole video dedicated to exactly that. It's an everything that's new design-wise plus an unboxing video. So if you wanna see that video as well, just click the card at the top right. So here are the technical specifications of our two contestants. The 13-inch is a base model. I know, pretty boring. And you can snag one of these base 13-inch models still directly from Apple for yourself, but it'll set you back $1,300 here in the States. This mid-tier 14-inch contains the M1 Pro chip with the 10-core CPU and upgraded 16-core GPU. And as you'll see, that extra horsepower to the GPU proves to make a pretty substantial difference. It's also decked out with the base 16-inch of RAM and a 2TB SSD. This particular configuration will run you around $2,900 though, more than double of the base 13-inch. So man, oh man, when you're throwing that much money on a computer, I hope you're at least making an informed decision. All right, so first off, guys, you already know I had to hit you with the good old classic Geekbench 5. Geekbench is a very dependable test that at least gives an indication at the potential both computers bring to the table. But as many of you know, what benchmarks you see on paper doesn't always necessarily correlate to real world scenarios. But don't worry, that's why we have plenty of tests that encompass a wide variety of use cases. We first begin by taking a look at what each machine does when running a basic single core and multi-core test. Single core performance in essence tests to see how well a machine would perform if all but one of the cores were disabled. In other words, think your basic tasks like browsing the internet, typing up a document on Microsoft Word, or creating a spreadsheet. The basics, you know? The 13-inch M1 performed well, coming in with a single core score of 1729, whereas the 14-inch Pro only slightly better at 1738. Remember, this here is not the base 14-inch Pro. The base 14-inch Pro has an inferior binned 8-core CPU, same as the 13-inch, but this model here is the non-binned 10-core CPU. Wait a second, Juan, what do you mean by binned? I'm glad you asked. So basically, like almost everything in life, nothing is perfect, and during the manufacturing process of these chips, some of the cores may turn out to be defective for whatever reason. So instead of Apple taking an L and throwing out the whole chip, they'll sell it to you at a reduced price since not all cores are active. So if you decide on getting the inferior 8-core CPU off the base 14-inch Pro, you can expect pretty even performance in terms of single core when comparing it to the 13-inch M1. However, the changes are much, much more drastic when you start looking at multi-core. For multi, the base 13-inch scored a still impressive 7,610, but hold on. The 14-inch M1 Pro demolishes that score, coming in at a whopping 11,916, meaning those demanding tasks like video editing, 3D rendering, and even gaming should perform much better on the newer 14-inch. And while on the topic of gaming, let's also go ahead and run Geekbench's metal test. The metal test more or less gauges at the graphics capabilities of the machines. So again, 
Think better graphics for games, smoother editing, and less dropped frames. MacBooks, however, are known for notoriously not being the move for gaming. No worries, I have the Mac Daddy M1 Mac 16 inch on the way somewhere on a UPS truck. So I'll be making a dedicated video comparing video game performance to test out whether the belief that Macs can't game is total BS or if there's some truth to it. Anyway, the base 13 inch comes in with a decent metal score of 21,673, but guys, the 14 inch nearly doubles that with a score of 38,240, insane. Whether you're a PC guy or an Apple fanboy, you gotta admit Apple has done something pretty remarkable here with these new machines. And to round out Geekbench, we also ran an OpenCL test, and this also goes hand in hand with the GPU and not so much the CPU. An OpenCL score can give you a decent idea of the computational power of your computer's GPU in a similar manner that a metal benchmarking test will. For OpenCL, the 13-inch M1 comes in with a score of 19,295, whereas the 14-inch M1 Pro, again almost doubling the score, coming in at 35,776. This shouldn't come as a surprise given that this specific 14 inch configuration has a 16 core GPU versus the M1 standard 8 core. So yeah, nearly doubling those scores makes a ton of sense, doesn't it? Since you basically have double the GPU horsepower. But okay, now moving on to Cinebench, a very dependable test that thousands of people use to gauge at a better picture of what a computer can do. Cinebench is a real-world cross-platform test that evaluates the capabilities on a truer scale, and by that I mean it replicates real-world usage a little better than other tests by really putting that CPU and GPU into overdrive. As a matter of fact, the fans started to crank up right away, so you know these two were working. Just like Geekbench, it tests both multi and single core, so at the conclusion of the test, these were the results. On single core, again, we see pretty similar results with the 14-inch barely edging out. The 13-inch has a single core score of 1518 points, while the larger 14-inch came in at 1529. And just as you'd expect, over on multi-core, the M1 Pro completely annihilated the 13-inch. The M1 13-inch comes in with 7703, while the M1 Pro, again, who would have guessed, nearly doubles the performance with a score of 12,321. Not bad, not bad, but then again, this mid-spec 14-inch wasn't cheap by any means. Okay, so now let's switch gears a little and take a closer look at the SSDs. Half of y'all are like, huh? SSD stands for Solid State Drives, i.e. your storage, not to be confused with memory. So Apple's SSDs have historically been very top-notch, extremely dependable, and very fast. But now, the new M1 Pro and M1 Max machines have incredible improved read and write speeds, so I wanted to see it for myself. If you're a photographer or videographer, chances are you're copying a lot of photos or videos from a flash drive or something. So knowing you have very snappy read and write speeds puts you at a good advantage. And for those running a business know all too well, time is money. So over on the M1 13 inch scores were hovering around 2800 megabytes per second on read and 2100 for write speeds. Remember, read speeds determine how quickly a device can open a file. Think like opening and reading a book. And read speeds is the exact opposite. It measures how quickly a device can save something to a storage device. Or how I remember it, it's like imagine writing some notes and saving them for your upcoming test. The 14-inch didn't disappoint with a whopping 5,400 megs per second for read and 6,400 megabytes per second on write. Apple advertises that they can go up to 7.6 gigs a second though, so this is getting pretty close to that. Believe me when I say, opening and saving on the M1 Pro 14-inch is extremely fluid and very snappy. Next up, we head over to the newest version of the Blender benchmark test. Now, this test took a lot longer than I originally thought. I forgot just how long the Blender test takes. Blender does a variety of things which takes into account real-world usage, CPU potential, and graphics potential. Blender performs six different tests and at the end, spits out how long it took to complete each test. Here, remember, lower is better and across the board, the 14-inch finished in overall much less time than the M1 13-inch. I'd even say at about half the time. The 14-inch M1 Pro finished the entire test in roughly 54 minutes total, whereas the M1 13-inch finished in about roughly an hour and 37 minutes. So again, I reiterate, if you use your machine as your main income source, 
everything is pointing to nearly doubling the performance for the 14 inch but the more than double price tag is enough to make anyone cry when forking over that credit card rounding out graphics and cpu power we now go over to the gfx metal test which uses a variety of scenes that pushes these devices to the very limit and again gives you a rough idea of how well a machine can perform and what i like about this test is it gives you a frame per second score so you can see just how smooth you can expect your computer to perform when rendering games or video we ran four tests including the aztec ruin test and the car chase among others and here are the results were you surprised to see a more than twofold increase in performance at this stage in the performance test Heck no, the M1 Pro 14 inch blows the 13 inch out of the water and completely obliterates it with that extra horsepower. Just take a look at these numbers. And finally, let's head over to more of some real world testing, including a test for all my photographers and videographers. Being a YouTuber obviously means I personally work with a ton of B-roll and video. So for me, it's very important that I choose the machine that is best gonna suit my needs. I went ahead and exported the same five minute video I shot with my Sony a7 III and put just a couple of LUTs and ran the same edits on both and exported the same five minute project using Using the same exact compressor settings. I was thrilled to see that both machines did extremely well, and in terms of real world usage, this time the M1 fared much better when it comes to a 5 minute export. The M1 13 inch came out with a time of 1 minute and 23 seconds, which is already really good. The M1 Pro 14 inch, however, bested it just a smidge with a slightly better time coming in at 1 minute and two seconds. This equates to roughly about a 33% increase according to this test, but this will likely vary depending on the length of the project and the intensity of your editing. And last but not least, for my photographers, I'm so glad Apple reintroduced the SD card slot. Man, I'm telling you, idiotic move by Apple to remove all of the most important ports and then nickel and dime you with dongles and call it a pro machine. Now with the 14 inch though, you can import photos quickly without having the need for a dongle. So for this last test, I imported 162 photos and copied and pasted the exact same edit settings across all the photos and then exported them. To my surprise, the 14 inch M1 Pro absolutely killed it with an extremely impressive export time of just 40 seconds. With the M1 13 inch trailing considerably, exporting the same 162 photos in 3 minutes and 41 seconds. Wow, if these gains don't impress you, I don't know what will. The thing is, the PC and computer world were shocked by the introduction of the M1 chip. Before the redesign, the M1 was arguably the best chip on the planet inside a laptop, but now, Boy, oh boy, the M1 Pro and M1 Max came down hard with a massive statement. Of course though, while these performance improvements are indeed impressive, it for sure will cost you. I've said it once and I'll say it again, the M1 MacBook Air with bumped up storage to fit your needs is the Apple laptop for most people, hands down. But if you're dead set on a MacBook Pro and can't decide between the 13 inch or 14 inch, I at least hope my video serves as a subtle aid for you in helping you make that decision. Whether you use your MacBook for your hobby or your profession, you'll definitely want to lean more towards a pro machine. As I mentioned earlier, feel free to throw me a DM with your use case and I'd be happy to give a recommendation. Just know I might take a while as I'm a pretty busy dude most of the time. But what do you think? Across the board, a nearly twofold increase in performance. One costs $1,299, the other nearly $3,000 when you take taxes into account. In any case, the choice is ultimately yours, but please consider dropping a like if you learned something new or if my video helped you in any way. A like goes a long way and means more to me than you think. And before I go, this is just one of many comparison videos, by the way. I still have two other MacBook Pro 14 inch models and my M1 Max 16 inch on the way. So drop your suggestions on which model you'd like to see compared next. I'm playing catch up as I just got back from Vegas and recovering from a throat infection, but expect a whole playlist on configuration options comparisons on the newly redesigned MacBook Pros here in the near future. Until next time guys, take care and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.